mean, before getting into this issue about loan demand and loan availability and all the rest of it, I mean, what do you think is going on with the banking system? We, we get the weekly updates. They tell us maybe things have stabilized, but no one feels that great about the situation. And there's <clears> been no movement on the deposit insurance like you were calling for, at least on the business side. Well, the FDID, FDIC did come out with a proposal, and, and their pro preferred proposal was something that I certainly feel is the right one, which is to uh, expand insurance for business deposits. But, you know, Kelly, it's all interrelated, all right? Uh, the banking uh, system is, is under some stress, and they're under stress because of deposits and, you know, a, a one month that's yielding five. 50. That's causing a lot of cash sorting, we like to say, in, in our business. Uh, you take combine that with the failures and then the regulatory response. And what people are talking about is not making loans. They're talking about increasing liquidity and making sure that the deposits stick around. And so that is called a tightening lending environment that will impact the economy. It's not really that difficult to see. The, the problem will be that we don't have an overly zealous regulatory environment that even puts tighter screws on this, on this issue. Oh, sure. You know, one of the things that jumped out to me about that loan officer survey yesterday was weak demand. You know, we keep talking about the banks, the banks, yeah. and are they lending? Are they, well, it doesn't matter if there's not a lot of demand for loans. Why do you think that is? Well, because loans are, are now uh, what we used to be able to borrow at 3 to 4 percent, now you're borrowing at 8 to 9. And uh, when you put that in your HP 12C calculator, <laughs> uh, what you can afford to pay, whether it's a house, an office building, or making an investment in M&A, if you're financing it with debt, your ability to pay has gone down. Uh, and uh, that is, uh, that's effectively what the Fed intended to happen. That's why they raised rates in the first place, was to slow down the economy. So this is all to be expected. I think the bigger thing is, I'll say this, Kelly, the Fed needs to stop right here, right now, uh, okay? And they need to look and look at the data. I think inflation will come in tomorrow a little bit, but uh, we, we've reached a point where the next couple of moves, I think, uh, brings recession into play. And so What uh, if Chair I'll Powell say says, you know, Ron, I take your point, but I'm sorry, my heart is not with you. My heart is with, uh, you know, the American people and they're suffering from inflation. Well, no, I think that uh, that's right. And uh, the heart should be with the people who would lose their jobs in a recession mm -hmm. uh, when you'd see the unemployment rate potentially, you know, get up to six, seven percent. So it's look, the chairman Powell has the toughest job in the world. I'm not suggesting that I gave you my opinion, which is that you're seeing enough things break, enough things come under pressure that uh, it doesn't uh, hurt to take a little account of what's going on. And uh, you can always move. But I think that the inflation, we'll see tomorrow, but I believe that we're at a place where we can pause not only rate increases, we can pause QT uh, a little bit and let this uh, economy get back on uh, steady footing. Yeah, draining deposits from the, the system. Right, absolutely. So, you know, we look at the data coming in. It's 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 lagging, granted, the lagging employment, inflation, it looks sturdy. But do you think that the risk of a sudden stop in the economy has grown or, or is growing? Uh, you're talking about a recession? Yeah, kind, but kind of like, you know, a, a more of a, a climactic crisis type of event that that triggers that. Yeah, I you know that would I, that would be a geopolitical event, and in, in, in my opinion, I I think a lot of people got all you know got excited about uh, a couple of banks that failed. You know, I was in the business in the 1980s. There was a the the savings and loan crisis was much bigger to the economy than what this is. So I I I don't see that. In fact, Kelly, I, we see the market rallying from here. I mean, there's so much negative sentiment. You know, the old adage that markets climb a wall of worry. Uh, we actually. Up our S and P forecast up five percent. I saw that just yesterday. I saw that. I saw that. that was a yeah. great. Yeah, and so yeah, and I, you... the fact the fact that you're you're smiling makes me even more bullish. No, I, <laughs> so, I listen. I, I hear Barry, and he's raising it to forty four hundred. While he and others are all going, yeah, we're going into a recession. I'm going. Why do people want to keep chasing this? I don't understand. I mean, it's like it's like we're all having a wild party, knowing that you know that this that this terrible ending is coming. I don't know. It's odd. I don't, I don't know what wild party you would be having. I, I don't. The market's any, here to any, date. Uh, the party. market since Jan 1, Ron, this is not what anybody thought was going to happen. True.